Hi, welcome to a short presentation on point cloud sharing using Trimble Cloud Engine. Cloud Engine is a fairly new software for us, but it's a powerful way to conduct processing, analysis and sharing. And it's the last bit we're going to be touching on today. We'll go through the import of some scan data, bit of cleanup, uh, integration of a little bit of modeling data. We'll annotate it, publish it and show the shareable result. So I have Trimble Cloud Engine open and I'm just going to go ahead and start a new project and give it a name. Import some data. So in this case, I'm using some uh, X7 scanner data. Uh, so some of the work is already done for us here. The, the scans are registered together. They've been colorized, uh, but Cloud Engine can take data from wherever it's coming. Uh, and we've got some abilities to do some of those processes if we need, registrations, georeferencing, things like that. Just drag and drop some grid of D57s in, in this case. And that import shouldn't take too long. So we'll come back when that's finished. That import's finished up now, two, two and a half minutes, something like that. Uh, fairly small set of data, just four scans here. So that's obviously depending on how much data and what your computer looks like. Uh, but in this circumstance, we've got uh, some interesting manhole data. So we took the X7 scanner and uh, started on top of a tripod and then inverted and elevated down. I'm going to go through, go through a little bit of cleanup. So I'm not particularly interested in any of the above ground. So I'll use a, a limit box clipping plane tool, whichever we want to call that. Get rid of a little bit of these trees until we work out what we want to be seeing. Uh, I had a setting in use to automatically constrain the uh, radius of each scan. So I've got 20 meters on there. Otherwise, I'd have a little bit more data in each direction. Uh, for this scenario, let's say I'm just mainly interested in the, uh, the underground features uh, and probably the entry point. So somewhere like that. And then I'll jump in and start doing some cleanup. So we've got our usual sort of bulk select tools. Delete those. A little bit of ref reflection from some water underground. I want that. And a variety of tools, you know, the usual sort of polygon or freehand select uh, can add and subtract from a selection so I can get in and clean up in that complex 3D shape that I need. So I'll go and finish that now. So another minute or two into some of the cleanup there, uh, just finishing with one of the handy features of Cloud Engine, which is our uh, brush select, sort of intelligent brush, which is gonna select based on distance. So here I can brush onto some of this uh, tripod noise at the forefront of my scan and not be too worried about selecting the actual pipe work behind it. Delete that, still got a little bit more. Very good. So one thing I probably should have pointed a little earlier is I've got a number of preset uh, levels of detail, I suppose. So one of the strengths of Cloud Engine is that it can manage you know, very, very large point clouds in such a way that our computer can still see it and operate with it. So we've got two pre-selected here. I'm gonna go ahead and load up the slightly higher resolution. So that might look a little bit nicer now. So now that I'm reasonably cleaned up, show another nice feature of Cloud Engine, which is some pretty easy ways to get some light modeling happening. So I'm just going to put some cylinders in essentially to replicate these pipes. Grow that selection using a cylinder. And you can see it's giving me a pipe radius there, which is pretty helpful. Add a little bit onto the end and, and make a decision about where I want the model to be represented down the end in the cavern here. I'm going to say we'll just cut it there. And we'll fit that. Beautiful. I'll go ahead and do the other one. Certainly could be more rigorous about the model. You know, where does where does that end finish? How am I going to treat the actual cavern here? Not so much the point of this video. I could be bringing in existing model data and, and integrating it with the scan data. More 
just modeled those in so that I have uh, some 3D shape that I can share and show that the, the software will handle that just as nicely as the point cloud. Add a little bit more value to this, we'll get some uh, measurements or annotations in there. So if I remember my second pipe came up, radius 1.016. that in there excellent one other really helpful feature is that I can drop a PDF in so if I did have a, a 2d plan drop that in a certain position and that's going to stay with the data when I publish and share it which we'll have a go at now I'm also going to select an option that will uh, load the, the station image. So I'll publish that up now. Beautiful. And we've had that published up for us. So that's loaded in our browser there. We've got this site overview map. But this is the published result, essentially. So much as what I had in Cloud Engine, except this is running in our browser. Didn't show before, but we have the, the station images. So not particularly pretty underground, but enough to get a feel of what's happening. And so at this point, this is the shareable data. So you can share this with anyone and they can come in and do some basic visualization and analysis. Okay, if I dig in there, my PDFs here, open that one up, very good. Similarly, my measurements, I put some in, uh, the user might want to take their own. So here, just a, a vertical height measurement on one side of the pipe that I forgot to annotate. Okay, a little bit rough, but we get the picture. Really easy display to use. All our buttonology is there. We've got some more advanced options like sliders and slices. So you might want to take that down and get a, a cutaway view. Start to get a bit further understanding of what scan data I've provided to this person. And we've got our top left right, basic sort of viewing options. So a really intuitive interface. User doesn't need to be you know, experienced with point clouds. We can be distributing this information either by a, a light, simple program, replicating exactly what we've seen for an offline option, or if we go down the Microsoft Azure path, then we can be sharing this online in the browser. That will conclude the video for today. Maybe just one short point to make. Uh, Cloud Engine that you saw at the start, that's the licensed product. Uh, but the view share option at the end, that's you know as readily distributable as you'd like it to be. So there's no limit on how many users or how much scans data that you're going to put into that. Thanks for watching and see the pop-up links if you'd like to know more.